What is up, ladies and gentlemen? It's Team Nostantoski here of Maze and Brew, and we are back with episode one of Freshman Feature for the class of 2021. Michigan closed with the number 10 class overall. Thank you guys for your votes on Twitter on who I should cover for the first episode. Today, we're covering the five-star quarterback, J.J. McCarthy. Let me know who you want to see for episode two. I go on Twitter and I post a poll there. Go to the community tab on the Maze and Brew channel. I'll post a poll there as well. And let me know in the comments below. So a couple housekeeping items beyond that before we dive in here. Number one, I'm going to show film throughout this video. I'll be doing a separate series this summer around film and a little bit more film analysis. So stay tuned for that. But today we're talking more scouting, recruitment, projection, all of those things. Number two, actually there's no number two. Let's just dive in right away. So it wouldn't be right if we didn't start this series for the class 2021 without the leader of the class and JJ McCarthy, highest ranked guy on Michigan's board for this class. Let's get into it. For his high school, he played at Nazareth Academy in Illinois through his junior year. He's from the Midwest. Makes sense. He transferred to IMG Academy for his senior year. It was looking a little dodgy whether or not the season would be played for a senior year in Illinois. So he transferred to IMG to guarantee a senior season. He went 13-1 for both of his seasons as the starter at Nazareth Academy. He won a state title in 2018, lost the state title, made it to the finals, though, in his subsequent year as a junior in 2019. At IMG Academy, they went undefeated last year, pretty much destroyed everyone in their path and route to a national championship. The closest margin of victory was a 27-point win over Duncanville of Texas. Everyone else, they've just demolished. So really good season. I have, I have a couple previous videos I did breaking down his film in the early season games, so I'll link those in the description as well. You can click the icon up above. should have those linked as well. So at IMG, McCarthy himself said that he grew a bit in football. His emotional intelligence, he matured there as well, uh, and he felt more relaxed and more calm overall. Being around that level of competition and that level of talent on your offense will do that to you, and hopefully the game slowed down a bit for him than his time uh, at Illinois. So diving into his stats here, as a senior in 2020, 91 for 156, over 1,400 passing yards, 16 passing touchdowns, and the key here, zero interceptions. So perfect season pretty much for J.J. McCarthy's senior year. Still really good junior and sophomore years too, right? He uh, put up over 2,800 yards his junior year, 34 TDs to eight interceptions and sophomore year. Uh, possibly even better, over 3,400 yards, 39 passing touchdowns, and four interceptions. So just really, really phenomenal career, both at Nazareth Academy and IMG Academy. For his metrics, I couldn't find a whole lot. His listed 40 time is 4.87, which seems about accurate. The other measurables for his shuttle vertical, I couldn't find. His height is 6.3, weight is 190, so would like to get him a bit higher, closer to 200, maybe 210. Uh, would be his plain weight, but he's close to that. And 6'3", that gives him a nice height at quarterback. Looking at his rankings here. Okay, so he's a four-star if you look individual rankings at Rivals, ESPN, and 24-7. But why is he a five-star, right? He's, he's top 50 nationally to Rivals, top 25 to ESPN, number 37 national. They all have him between second pro-style quarterback and fourth pro-style quarterback and right around top 10 within the top 10 in Florida. So why is he a five-star? Because it's very rare for a guy to be that highly ranked uh, by all three services there. So that gets him within the five-star status at 23 national, according to the 24-7 composite rankings, number two pro style, and number six overall in the state of Florida. So because all those services have him as a really tight group up there, that'll bump his composite more where other prospects usually have one service who ranks him high, maybe another one lower. Uh, these are all conclusive uh, top 50 ranking for J.J. McCarthy, so that bumps him up to five-star status. Okay, looking at his recruitment here. So he committed to Michigan back as a sophomore. Uh, he wants to build something in Michigan. That's something that he's reiterated throughout his recruitment, being part of the revival, something that he's spoken about a lot and resonates with him. And staying nearby in the Midwest where he grew up, that was also something that he mentioned was a big deciding factor. He was a leader of the class, right? Without a doubt. He was able to coordinate a visit on campus during COVID this past, uh, past re recruiting cycle. So able to get together a number of recruits, get them to campus, able to speak to uh, what an actual tour would be, right? He was able to tour campus, able to meet with the coaches before his commitment. A lot of the players that were closing out their recruitments this year, they weren't able to do so. So having him not only 
organize this sort of uh, on-campus visit, but be able to speak to that and stay firm in his commitment throughout a shaky 2020 campaign. To me, all these factors make him the biggest commitment under Jim Harbaugh. And uh, that goes even beyond his ability, but his ability to keep the class bonded together, right? Most fans wouldn't have blamed him if he decided to commit elsewhere after what we saw from the on-field product from Michigan in 2020. Uh, he was extremely steady throughout that, helped create an atmosphere of let's make Michigan better, let's bring them back to relevance here, and committed to the university first and helped keep that bond um, with that sort of approach rather than committing just to a coach or just to uh, the head coach, committing to the university. So he was paramount in uh, this class being a top 10 at the end of the day for Michigan. Looking at his offers, so he had offers for most of the Big Ten, Ohio State, Penn State, Wisconsin, uh, Minnesota, Iowa, uh, a lot of SEC offers, Ole Miss, LSU, Mississippi State, Tennessee, South Carolina, Texas A&M, Texas, pretty much anywhere you look, he had offers from Big Ten and SEC. He had offers throughout the Power Five outside of those two conferences as well. Um, his first offer, fun fact, was Matt Campbell out of Iowa State before he was even in high school. Uh, I don't know about you, but I was like 100 pounds like 5'5 five, five in eighth grade. I couldn't imagine getting an offer from a college before I get into high school. But anyway, scouting, good size, right? 6'3", 180, he's close to playing weight, put on a little bit more pounds and you'll get there. He can push the ball downfield uh, even with pressure. Consistency makes on-target throws from the pocket. His accuracy is something that uh, was lauded quite a bit. He can really hurt you while on the move. He's able to fire the ball in tight windows, able to put variability on the velocity of the ball as well. Pocket awareness is high and strong competition throughout his career. Some of the improvements, still room to improve that arm strength, right? It's not a Joe Milton arm. He's not going to tear the arms off of a wide receiver catching the ball. Uh, he has some back foot tendencies. I'll get to that in a bit. And then some accuracy spells. So intermediate, there are some questions about his overall accuracy um, and, and maybe not the consistency you want uh, from a pass-to-pass -pass standpoint. Um, but he's a guy who brings all of the intangibles possible. All right, so at the Elite 11 Finals, uh, which is a quarterback competition there, he made it a point to go first in the final round. He's a guy who's going to volunteer to be a leader, right? If He's a guy who's likely to be a future captain. And usually I kind of scoff at these things, but when it's a quarterback and a guy who puts together a recruiting class like this, that goes a long way. And he's a guy who understands he may not be the guy on campus. He spoke to this as well, where he might have to wait his turn, right? He might have to learn a bit before he's ready to step in. And he's aware of that and understanding of that. And that embodies uh, the team uh, focus and the, understand the process that it takes to get to a level where he can contribute. So that's all those intangibles, right? They, they, are, they vary in, in the importance for a recruit, for a quarterback like this. Uh, that's exactly what you want to see, right? So moving into his film, again, I'll have multiple videos moving forward about some of his breakdowns, and I have some of J.J. McCarthy specifically already. But what are things that stand out from me watching his film? Accuracy is there overall. Uh, ball placement, really impressive. Sometimes there's throws uh, that need to be behind the receiver on his route or um, you know back shoulder throws. He has that in his repertoire. Um, plenty of velocity to get it done as well. His ability to throw off schedule is really good. So whether it's off the back foot in the face of pressure, whether he's stepping into pressure, uh, throws on the run and, and improvising, all those levels are super high for him. And I really like his running. He's listed as a pro style, but he, when he needs to run, he can. He has some wiggle to him, uh, but he doesn't have an over-reliance on it, right? He's clearly a pass first, and then when I need to get a first down, when I need to run, uh, he's going to run. And he knows when to slide, which is really important given the durability of Michigan's quarterback as of late. Having that knowledge of when to slide, when to dive, when to do those things, protect yourself, those are really valuable, and he showed that ability consistently. So what are things, the negative aspects? He didn't have to throw deep a whole lot of senior year. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but there's a lot of talent around him at IMG. They utilize a lot of screens, a lot of short slant passes, so maybe not seeing the, the deep level passing uh, that you like to see that a college quarterback obviously has to make. So that's nothing really against him, just the offense he was playing in. Uh, but there were times that he was a little bit inconsistent with his mechanics. I thought sometimes he got happy feet at time of pressure, uh, tendency to throw off his back foot more often than was needed. So I think he relied on that a little bit, abandoned his mechanics sometimes. But overall, these are more nitpicks than something I saw consistently. So for his comparison here, you guys might not like this, but I'm going to say Shea Patterson. Okay, this is a guy similar size. McCarthy's a little bit taller, 
but both were five stars uh, out of IMG Academy. Both were pro style with some wiggle and uh, lauded for their accuracy while on the move, right? Their ability to improvise. Um, I think Patterson, people gave him way more crap than he deserved while at Michigan. He was an excellent quarterback for the Wolverines in 2018, one of the best seasons Michigan QB has ever had statistically and was solid in 2019 as well. So I think the intangibles for J.J. McCarthy are a little bit different and provide me a little bit more security in what he'll develop into than maybe what we saw Shea Patterson maybe not realizing that ceiling. I think J.J. McCarthy likely has a higher ceiling because of those. But in terms of their athletic profile, their skill set, I think Patterson's a decent comp there. So finally, projection here. So Michigan has a decision to make with their path here. Do you go with a superstar true freshman quarterback or do you stick with two guys that have some ex experience, right? You have Joe Milton, you have Cade McNamara. I would bet heavily on number two, that is going with the guys who have experience. You need depth at the position. McCarthy has a great attitude coming in, said he's willing to work his way to his starting role. He's not the type of dude who's like, start me or I'm off, right? He understands that he's he might take some time for him to earn that starting role. And having him as a depth, depth position takes a little bit pressure off of him, let him learn the offense, grow, and then put him in a situation to be successful. So they would have to simplify the offense for him as a true freshman, as he learns, as he gets more comfortable. And I just don't think that's a style Jim Harbaugh wants to go with. And I truly think it'll be McNamara probably for the guy for the 2021 season. I might be wrong, right? If JJ McCarthy comes through and really impresses by all means, right? But I just don't, I don't see it at this point. Um, I do think it's a matter of when rather than if for him, right? I think by 2022, he'll be strongly challenging a starting role. And it, it, again, it's just a matter of when he gets up to speed rather than if for JJ McCarthy. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. When do you think it'll be JJ McCarthy time versus McNamara's time and, and, and all of these things? Let me know your thoughts. I'm interested to hear them. Again, check out my Twitter for I'll have a poll for you to vote on who you want to see for episode two, as well as the community tab here right on the YouTube channel. If you don't want to head over to my Twitter. Finally, like and subscribe. If you haven't already, really helps the channel grow. We're close to 3,000 subscribers. Let's help get it there. And beyond that, guys, thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. Stay safe out there. And as always, go blue.